In rock news, meanwhile, it's been almost four years since the long-running English synth-pop band Depeche Mode released a new album, and part of the reason for that delay has been singer Dave Gahan's much-publicized struggle with drug addiction. Gahan says he's straight now, though. John Norris flew to London, where the band's finally making a new record, to get the story. When last we saw Depeche Mode's Dave Gahan... He's taking everything away from me that I loved. And so I've got to rebuild my life. I think I, I had this the dark side of, of myself what was tempting fate. I was, tr I was trying to choose my own destiny. I was trying to like pick the time when it was time to leave. And, but there was something there for me, uh, God or whatever, wanted to, didn't, that wasn't supposed to happen, you know? I mean, the paramedics that would come and pick me up, um, who did on a couple of a few occasions, um, started calling me the, a cat, you know? And, uh, <laughs> that um, I was running out, and I was, David, you're running out, I remember one of them saying to me. And this is where those paramedics found themselves on May 28th of last year, the Sunset Marquee Hotel in West Hollywood, where Gahan had injected a cocaine and heroin speedball that left him literally flatlining at nearby Cedars sinai Hospital for two minutes. The incident was the culmination of a downward spiral the singer had apparently been on for several years ever since moving to L.A. and becoming hell-bent on reinventing himself. Not consciously, but I was creating a monster, you know, I was creating something that I wasn't. I got carried away with the whole idea of being this um, rock star. Dave got into a scene, you know, when he, when he went to live in America, it was the start of the whole grunge thing. It was a big scene at the beginning of Songs of Faith and Devotion. When he came over to Europe, and he was talking in an American accent, and he'd gone from liking David Bowie, you know, to... Uh, like in all these uh, Soundgarden and this and that and Alice in Chains. I mean, he was really into it in a big way. We all know what went along with that. Gahan's drug use moved into high gear on the band's 93-94 devotional tour, on which, by his own admission, some nights he could barely stand up. Once the tour wound up, he returned to L.A., where he says he attempted suicide several times and fell into a familiar junkie pattern of half-hearted, unsuccessful stints in rehab and of finding ways to justify his habit. As far as the band is concerned, were you ever sort of given an ultimatum? No, that enough, you know, for sure. I know that Martin, for him, it was like there was no point in going on anymore if it was just going to continue like this, you know. It's not a question of being a dictator. It's just a question of, like, facing the facts that, you know, that the band's not going anywhere with Dave in his current condition. Now I'm clean. Gahan's overdose led to an intensive stay in court-ordered rehab, and he says he's now been clean for eight months. And through his work with a vocal coach, his one-shot voice is sounding stronger than ever on the band's upcoming album, Ultra. He's even facing his old demons in the first video from the record, the Anton Corbin-directed Barrel of a Gun. I need to change a lot of things about me, and it's not going to happen overnight. But um, if, I, if I do just take it one day at a time, and you know, I hate to use all the cliches and stuff in the program, but they work, you know, yeah. that's why they're there. <laughs> and they have to become, I'd rather be, you know, throwing out cliches than be the, cli the dead cliche. <laughs> Depeche Mode's Barrel of a Gun single will be released on Tuesday, followed on April 15th by the album Ultra. For a complete transcript of that uh, Dave Gahan interview, go, to, uh, go online to mtv.com. Stick around because